Have you ever wondered if the world only snaps into focus when you're paying attention? It sounds like a wild idea from a sci-fi movie, but it's at the heart of one of the strangest discoveries in physics. This is the quantum observer effect. The bizarre fact that particles can behave differently depending on whether we're watching them or not. It's not magic, it's quantum mechanics in action. And it challenges everything we think we know about reality. So let's dive in and unpack this mind twister step by step. Picture this. Back in the early 1900s, scientists were trying to figure out if light is a wave or a particle. To test this, they came up with the double slit experiment. It's simple but revolutionary. You take a screen with two narrow slits close together, then you shine light through them onto a wall behind. If light is a wave, it should pass through both slits, interfere with itself, and create a pattern of bright and dark bands on the wall. That's interference, where waves overlap and either amplify or cancel each other out. And that's exactly what happened. The light made those bands, so light must be a wave, right? But then, things got weird. When they dimmed the light down to single photons, tiny packets of light, like individual particles, the same pattern appeared over time. Each photon hit the wall in a random spot, but as more piled up, they formed the interference bands. It was as if each photon went through both slits at once, interfering with itself. How could a single particle do that? It was like the photon was acting like a wave, spreading out and taking multiple paths. Scientists are so baffled by this, because particles shouldn't do that. So they decided to watch more closely. They set up a detector at the slits to see which one each photon went through. And boom! The interference pattern vanished. Instead, the photons hit the wall in two sharp piles, right behind each slit, like they were behaving as solid particles now, going through one slit or the other. No spreading out, no interference. The only difference? We were observing them, measuring their path, and then somehow, the act of looking collapsed the wave into a particle. This is the observer effect in a nutshell. In the quantum world, things exist in a fuzzy state called superposition. That's when a particle can be in multiple places or states at once. Like the photon going through both slits. But when we measure it, when we observe, the superposition collapses. The particle picks one definite state. It's like the universe is playing a game of hide and seek only deciding where to hide when you start looking. So why does this happen? It's not because our minds, our eyes, have some mystical powers. It's about measurement itself. To observe a quantum particle, you have to interact with it, shine light on it, or bounce another particle of it. That interaction forces the system to choose. Think of it like trying to check if a soap bubble is there by poking it with a finger. The poke pops the bubble changing what you are trying to measure. In quantum terms, that measurement disturbs the delicate superposition. But here's where it gets even stranger. What counts as an observer? Does it have to be a human? No. Any device that records information does the trick. Even if no one looks at the data, the interference disappears. It's the act of gaining information that collapses the wave. Some experiments have delayed the choice, erasing the data after the measurement, and the same pattern comes back. It's as if reality retroactively changed based on what we know. Since you made it this far, tap like and subscribe, and tell me where you are watching from. This leads to bigger questions, like what quantum mechanic really means. There are different interpretations. The most famous is the Copenhagen interpretation. Named after Niels Bohr's group in Denmark, it says that quantum world is probabilistic. Particles don't have definite properties until measured. The wave function describes possibilities, and observation collapses into certainty. So in other words, reality is fuzzy until we pin it down. 
but not everyone buys that. Enter the many worlds interpretation from Hugh Everett. It says that there's no collapse. Instead, every possibility happens in a branching universe. When you measure a photon, the universe splits. In one branch, it goes left. In another, right. You only see one outcome because you're in one branch. The interference is from waves in parallel worlds overlapping. It's wild, but it avoids the weirdness of collapse by saying everything happens somewhere. Other ideas exist too, like pilot wave theory, where particles ride on hidden waves that guide them, or objective collapse models, where superposition break down naturally over time. No one knows which is right. Experiments keep testing them, but quantum mechanics works differently for predictions, even if the why eludes us. Now, let's talk implications. If observation shapes reality, does that mean consciousness plays a role? Some think so, tying it to philosophy or even spiritually, like the universe needs observers to exist. But most physicists say no. It's about information and interaction, not minds. Still, still, it blurs the line between observers and observed. We are not separate from the quantum world. We are a part of it. On a practical level, this effect powers technologies. Quantum computers use superposition to crunch massive problems. But measurement collapses the state, so engineers work to delay it. Quantum sensors detect time changes by exploiting the observer effect. Even photosynthesis in plants might use quantum tricks to efficiently capture light. But the deepest impact is our worldview. Classical physics says the world takes like a clock, predictable and solid. Quantum mechanics says no, it's probabilistic, interconnected, and observer dependent. Reality isn't fixed out there, it's emergent shaped by how we probe it. Think about the next time you look at something ordinary. At the tiniest scales, the act of looking changes what's there. This isn't just a lab stuff. It questions free will, casualty, and the nature of existence. If measurement creates outcome, are we co-creators of reality or just along for the probabilistic ride? The observer effect reminds us that science isn't about certainties. It's about peeling back layers of mystery, only to find more underneath. So the next time you stare at the stars or a flickering light, remember, the universe might be staring back, waiting for you to decide what it is. Thanks for exploring this quantum riddle with me. If it bent your brain a bit, hit that subscribe. We've got more mysteries coming. What do you think? Does observation really change reality? Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching till the end, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell me what you want to see next.